Every person should know the plan because it is God's story and it defines our relationship to God, to our fellow human beings, and to the world, and even to the devil. The plan helps us to figure out who we are, why we are here, why there are trials and sorrows, and why there's death. The plan provides direction, orientation, and focus to our lives. Now briefly stated, the plan is this. Every person is a first generation son or daughter of heavenly parents. We had a long premortal life of activity, of learning, of joy, of choosing and preparation in our father's, heavenly father's home before we came to earth. We were active participants in a series of meetings that are called the Grand Council. And we were taught how to become like our heavenly parents. That's the purpose of the plan. They have bodies of flesh and bones. And we understood that this earth would be created with the purpose of being the place where we could come and be born and we get a body of flesh and bones and have some experience and be tested. We also knew that this earth is to become a celestial world as the permanent home of those who obey the plan of God. We saw the eternal destiny of mankind. We saw the future glory of the earth. And we sang and we shouted for joy at the prospect of coming here to this earth because we knew it was one of the necessary steps toward becoming like God. You probably have noticed that in the proclamation on the family, the second paragraph, we are taught that you who are women were women spirits in the premortal life and will be women forever. Likewise, we who are men were men spirits in the premortal life and will always be men. The proclamation states that gender is, and this is a quote, an essential characteristic of eternal identification and purpose. There is a purpose in you being a woman. There is a purpose in you being a man. We were instructed in the Grand Council that the fall of Adam was necessary to provide a mortal environment, that it would introduce sin and death. But we also knew that Jesus Christ would be our Redeemer and that he would not fail. Because we trusted Jesus, we looked beyond the troubles of earth life by our faith, we could see the glorious destiny, and we willingly agreed to come to earth according to the Father's plan. We saw the prophets and apostles and other church leaders chosen and foreordained. We saw those who would be mothers and wives of these spiritual leaders. We saw Adam and Eve chosen and foreordained, and Jesus Christ chosen and foreordained. We ourselves, which includes every one of you, were also chosen and foreordained for service to our Lord, not only to serve in that premortal life, but to serve the Lord in this life and beyond in his church. In the Grand Council, a contention arose among the spirits. It was apparent that if there were requirements and commandments an agency in our mortal life, some souls would be lost. Lucifer wanted a system of anything goes, requiring no individual effort, no responsibility, no standards of individual excellence, no personal decency, and no works. He proposed to save everybody because there would be no requirements. Lucifer gained many followers because his proposal looked like the easy way and also because those who followed him did not trust Jesus. This conflict went on for some length of time. After a long discussion with adequate opportunity to change, we saw Lucifer and his followers cast out of heaven for rebellion. The same important issues 
that were there in the war in heaven are now at work among us here upon this earth, and they're just as wrong now as they were then. One of the consequences that came upon Lucifer and his followers is that they never will have the opportunity of being born into the world and getting a body of flesh and bones. That means they never will have the opportunity to become like God. We know because we know the plan <coughs> that our life will not end when we die. Our eternal spirit goes to a post-mortal spirit world that is right here on this earth where there is a continuation of learning and of activity and responsibility and interesting things to do. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is in the spirit world, and I suppose we won't have been there more than about 10 minutes before the home teachers and the visiting teachers will call on us. They'll tell us where the meetings are held, and we'll be given something to do. When the time is right and the Lord sees fit, each person will be resurrected, which means that his or her spirit will be permanently reunited with the same body we lived in on earth. After resurrection will come the final judgment and an assignment to one of the degrees of glory. If we have been valiant in the gospel, we will be assigned to this earth in its celestialized condition. 